Well, we were given permission to kind of give a sort of an exclusive first look teaser at the RTX 4060, which is interesting because if you recall during the announcements, this was supposed to lift in the embargo and be available in July, but they've pulled it into June. I don't know why the urgency, I don't know if maybe AMD has something coming, I'm not sure, but we're allowed to show you guys some early access numbers on performance, which I think is great because of the fact that I hate when embargoes lift on the day of availability, because now it gives you time to look at the numbers, kind of think about whether or not this is worth it to you so that you can decide on launch day if you even want to get it. But don't worry, there'll be plenty on shelves. If there's one thing we've learned about 40 series is the fact that they're not selling out. So anyway, 4060. Here we go, it's probably gonna be another bumpy ride. The Montec Titan Gold ATX 3.0 power supplies feature a Gen 5 PCIe power connector for adapter-free 40 series GPU installation and is available in 750, 850, 1000, and 1200 watt versions, giving you the power needed to power today's demanding PC components. 100% Japanese 105C capacitors provide improved performance, while the 135 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan with zero RPM mode keep all components cool even during the most demanding workloads, all while the 80 plus gold rating and 10 year warranty provide end user peace of mind. Check out the Titan Gold lineup of Montec power supplies by clicking on the sponsored link in the description below. Also, shameless plug, our brand new retro mats are out. It's, it's upside down. Our brand new retro gaming mats are available right now at jcsense.com. We also have the original gray and, and red if you don't want these cool colors that represent my childhood. You might notice this is not a Founders Edition card. I don't know if they're gonna have a Founders, edi Founders Edition. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna have a Founders Edition 4060 or not. Um, usually it's the 50 series cards that don't have a Founders. We had a Founders Edition 4060 Ti. Anyway, um, we'll just start with pricing. MSRP, 299. Uh, technically that's the same as what like 2060 and 3060 were, but you know what? I think we've already established that launching the new tier apparently at the same price is a bad thing. I, I think honestly, in terms of pricing, if you really want to earn the customer back, I think 279 would have been a competitive price. 259 would have been like, yo, let's just, let, let's get mainstream gaming back. But 299 is the MSRP, which you know is going to probably launch for much higher than that. But anyway, we were sent a uh, an Asus dual model. I didn't choose the Asus, it chose me. I would have preferred a different brand. You guys know how I feel about this right now, but whatever, this is what was uh, provided. Okay, so re regarding specs, we'll go over all this also in the full review where we compare it with uh, all of our titles in our normal benchmark suite. It's basically a 4060 Ti that shaved down a little bit. So in terms of memory, it's still eight gigabytes. That's, for a lot of people, that's not gonna be enough. Uh, even at 1080p gaming, which is where this card is targeted. In fact, we're not even allowed to talk about 1440p gaming in this video. Probably because even though they've talked about this being, the, the 60 series card being aimed at 1080p, we still do 1440p testing. So for us, they were like, stop it. For your early, you can only talk about 1080p. But moving on, eight gigabytes. Um, it's got 32, no. Instead of the 32 megabytes of L2 cache, it's cut down to 24. It's 128 bit bus, just like the 60 Ti. Um, it does have that larger L2 cache because the whole idea behind that is instead of doing like HBM or stacked RAM, which AMD did a while back and didn't work out very well with the Radeon 7 series, they are just having a bigger cache available to the GPU, which means less um, misses when it comes to accessing RAM or at least accessing that cache data, which means accessing the VRAM less, which means faster, uh, quote unquote, effective RAM speed. So anyway, whether or not it really makes a huge difference at the lower bus and the lower amount of VRAM, I guess time will just tell. But anyway, this is a fairly basic card. I'm all a little surprised that this one actually had a dual BIOS on it. So that's just a function of this particular card. It feels like a Ikea prop. If you guys ever gone to Ikea and you pick up the fake TV or the fake phones and it's so light, it, it, we're just so accustomed now to the giant big ass cards that a 40 series has, has developed. This feels broken, it, it just feels fake. But uh, what else do I wanna talk about here? Yeah, they've definitely targeted 1080p with this. Pricing, I feel like, it, look, it's a 299 MSRP, and this is the way the pricing goes right now. 299 for the 60, and the 60 only comes in one flavor, eight gig. You've got the 4060 Ti eight gig, which is 399, and you've got the 4060 Ti 16 gig, which is 499. I feel like that 499 price is a bit extreme, considering the fact that that was the price that a 3070 cost when 37, MSRP, I correct myself, 3070 I barely ever sold for that price. A 299, a 399, and a 49, 499 skew in the 60 series is just weird. I feel like if you're NVIDIA and, and 
you really wanted to instill some confidence back in the buyer base and say, hey, we want gamers to have game, you know, gaming cards that are affordable. It should have been a 279.99 MSRP, maybe even a 259.99. Because the problem is if there's no Founders Edition card, which I don't think there is, or they would have sent us that and not AIC cards, um, as 299 MSRP means we're gonna see 349.99 models and up when it comes to Asus eventually making its astronomically large Strix 60, which makes no sense at all. You don't need more than a basic card like this with the Dual, especially when the fact that it's only 110 watt TDP. 110 watt. Also, check this out. The irony of the fact that they are using a standard 8-pin PCI Express plug on their lowest watt part. Do you know why you haven't seen 40, 80 uh, cards and below melting that connector? It's because that's still only like a 370 watt. I hate the fact that I said only 370 watt when 250 used to be the norm. They put the, the card with the absolute 0% chance of burning a 12 volt plug with the old school 8 pin PCI Express. Moving on, let's go and throw this on the test bench. Let's do some actual testing with it. Let's see what some of the real life performance is. The only title we're allowed to test it with is Cyberpunk 2077, but I'm kind of okay with that. And let me tell you why. Cyberpunk 2077 is our most demanding title that we test, but it also allows us to play around with some of the features that NVIDIA is known for. DLSS 3, frame generation, and ray tracing. I would have never in a million years suggested anyone ever turn on ray tracing in a 2060. They're really comparing this card to the 2060 because of the fact that they know most people will generate, up, or not generate, but upgrade about every two generation cycles because of the fact that that puts you at about four to five years. Anyone still running a 2060 uh, non-TI, we're we'll comparing this to 2060 at the moment, would be uh, running first gen RT cores, second gen tensor cores. This is running third gen RT, fourth gen tensor cores. The downside is as the generation of the RT cores got faster and better, they put less and less of them in the graphics cards. Um, this supposedly will do great at ray tracing because of the improvements of DLSS 3 and especially frame gen. So let's put this, put this thing through its paces. I'm gonna put one of the wire views on here just cause I'm curious as to how much of that 110 watt is coming through the cable. Uh, I feel like all 110 of it should be coming through the cable if you wanna know the truth. There would be no reason to run 75 watts through the PCI Express slot. Although now if they come out with a 50 series card, probably with their efficiency gains they've gotten with Ada Lovelace, they'd be able to emit the power plug altogether. All right guys, let's sort it on the test bench and see if it is worthy of your money or your interest. So keep in mind, this is not a full review. Um, this is just a teaser, but I was kind of curious as to what our line draw is gonna be. Five watts at idle through the PCI Express slot. Like I said, I'd be surprised if they're pulling any wattage from the PCI Express slot other than just the basic turn on power, uh, like the, for the relay. There's no reason to pull any wattage through there at all. Um, moving forward, <clears throat> a couple things here. This is my benchmark sheet. Um, we don't have our 2060 tested yet. We've t t test, retested 2060 Super. All of our tests have been redone in all of our titles since 40 series, and we've been going through and doing our backlog tests on everything. So we're not gonna be able to compare it to 2060 today, but we will kind of compare it to 2060 Super, 3060, and then see how it does, like how far behind the 4060 Ti uh, is it. In terms of pricing, it's so weird because I didn't realize our tough, our 3060, is a tough model that was 449, which is probably one of the most expensive 3060s you could have gotten. That pricing is also um, like MSRP for that particular card. This is clearly not a tough, it is a dual. I would never spend the kind of money they would want for a tough on a 60 series card. That is wasted money because you could buy, you could buy a 3070 for that these days. So anyway, moving forward, let's look at some of the initial numbers here with Cyberpunk 2077 no RT. We 64 FPS in 1080p, ultra settings, no DLSS turned on, no frame generation, because 30 series doesn't have frame gen. Um, and so these are just raw horsepower numbers. Now we'll kind of play around with the match settings and then we'll see what we can get the FPS up to while we're playing the game. But I, I, I did some price checking here. 2060 on Amazon right now in our particular area, which is Southern California, 299, 259, 370, 249, 250, 354, it's all over the place, but 249 is our lowest right here. I'd be perfectly fine with this particular, like, well, actually, that looks like an MSI ripoff, doesn't it? I thought that was an MSI card for a second. What is, yeah. what is Kair Gaming? Okay, I probably wouldn't trust a brand I've never heard from, regardless of what the reviews say. So let's just say 
250, what is 51 Risk? What? I've never heard of these brands. So it's like, if you wanna go with a brand you trust, okay, 299 for a Zotac. Max Sun, okay, I've heard of Max Sun. They're starting to become a little bit more mainstream, but. 2060 Ventus for 199. Okay, that would actually be an okay deal. Like, okay-ish deal. The thing is, you could still get a 1080 Ti for that price, and a 1080 Ti would be a 2060. Anyway, moving on, but neither here nor there. You can see the pricing's still weird. If we look at 3060, they're a little more consistent. 299, that's an Asus Dual. That's the same exact card as what's on here, the previous gen, in terms of the Dual. So that's the same price as this card. If you can buy this card for a legit 299. Now, Nvidia sent us this card because it's supposed to be an MSRP model. Whether or not it actually gets put on the market for MSRP, because if you're Asus, how, what, what happens here? You have two choices. Lower all these prices for your cards or inflate that one. And I think you know which one that's gonna happen. Anyway, well, I mean, if you are looking at the market and you could buy a 2060 for 299 or a 3060 for 299 or a 4060 for 299, obviously the 4060 is what you're gonna go with. But I would have loved to have seen it at this price point. 278, you know, 279 right there. I was hoping there's another 279 for the Asus Dual in white. Irony is that the white card is cheaper when normally the white card is more expensive. I don't know. Another fun fact though, these are um, PCI Express 4.0 cards. So are the 4060s. When basically like 4070 and up is all PCIe Gen 5. Doesn't make a difference, honestly, because this card is never gonna come anywhere near saturating the bandwidth of PCI Express 4.0 16X. Never in a million years is that gonna happen. But anyway, as you can see, pricing is kind of everywhere. Here's the MSI 3060A gig for 269, 269, 269. Well, that's actually 350 for 269. So is that, that's a, those are terrible deals. Terrible deals, look at this. Anyway, enough yammering about pricing because let's just face it, the price is king. That is what's gonna determine if you're gonna buy it or not. Performance and price. We need to see now, for the same MSRP, are we getting more performance? Is it worth it? Let's see, because NVIDIA tends to really bank on the, we'll turn on the cool features like DLSS and frame gen. Frame gen in the titles that use it is a, is a compelling argument. However, it's still a fairly short list of gen, PCI, or excuse me, DLSS 3 with frame gen. Those titles are, are just like 15 or something around there. Take your work and gaming experience to the next level with the ViewSonic XG340C 2K Ultra Wide High End Display. The XG340C 2K 34 inch 100 Hz Ultra Wide Monitor features HDMI 2.1, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, a 1000R curved screen, VESA Display HDR 400 and 1 millisecond response time for the ultimate immersive gaming experience. And take control of multiple devices with KVM support while also taking full control of your display via the Elite Display Controller. To see the full list of specs and features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, first and foremost, we are running right now. We're at 51C. This, I don't know if you guys know this, the menu in, in Cyberpunk is rendered. So but we're only at 41%, 40%. Uh, you can see the clock is obviously representing that. It goes high and then it comes down. 1950 is where we're sitting right now. Uh, but 53C, the fans are not on yet. Why? Only 23 watts is getting pulled through the PCI Express, but we're pulling 62 watts total which right now it seems to be like doing a pretty good job at nearly splitting the load between the cable and the PCI Express slot. So we'll see what happens when we go high load, but remember this is 110 watt TDP. If we go into, um, holy cow, look at this power limit. 120? What's minimum? 78, okay. Anyway, we're in, we're in ultra. We're gonna run the, the track benchmark first. This is how all of our GPUs are compared to each other. We're not benchmarking the game to say here is what your performance is gonna be in the game when we use the benchmark. We are comparing cards to each other using the same test. So it's, a lot of people get confused of like, well, the, the track benchmark gives you more performance than the game. But that, that may be true, but we are comparing card to card using this as a dynamometer, if you will. So what we're looking for here is 64 FPS is what this exact test with the 3060 Tough, which is a higher clocking card, got us. I also wanna point out, I do believe we are in the standard BIOS right now, not the performance BIOS, but the only difference is the fan curve. Performance doesn't actually go into zero RPM as far as I can tell. It just lets the fans always run at a slower RPM for the sake of noise, but you still can't hear the card right now. But look, we are getting nearly the full wattage through the cable. So it's a 110 watt card. We're pulling 117.4 watts, 116. So I don't know if this card maybe has a, a lifted power limit at factory. 
but we are going above the 110 and it looks like we're only pulling about maybe 10 watts of it through the PCI Express slot, which makes sense because some power is going to be given there no matter what. It's, it's insane how, look at this, we're getting 80, it was low, it was low 70s for a bit there with 110 watts. The nerd side of me, it loves the efficiency. Okay, our average FPS is 80.8, 64 FPS is what we were getting with the 3060. So generationally, with the same heavy load of Cyberpunk with no frame gen or anything enabled, we got a what, 16 FPS jump from one gen to the other. As long as the price can really be 299, I still think 279 would be a whole much more compelling price point. Generationally, that's a great jump. It is, There's, you can't deny that. If, if you're getting that much more performance for the same price, that's a good thing. Um, where do we also land? So it puts us a little behind the 3060 Ti. And then if we look at our 4060 Ti, 101. So again, a big gap. We're talking 20 FPS between this card and the Ti. And that's what's so weird about this generation. We have huge gaps between it. 2060 Super, 67 FPS. So if we compare this to a 2060, which is gonna be obviously below that, and the 2060, which you were seeing the prices that they were, there would be no reason whatsoever to ever get a 2060 unless you can land one for like 200 bucks. Our max temp, as you can see, actually came down throughout the run because the fans turned on <laughs> and we never heard it. It's completely silent. That's the that's 110 watts. You can't do it, you can't fault that. All right, let's see. I'm just morbid curiosity here. Power limit, temp limit maxed. I'm gonna go like 100 megahertz overclock 82.33 okay so we gained an fps and a half 1.5 it's not bad for moving some sliders but pushing an extra 100 megahertz probably isn't isn't going to do much because again the voltage limits all right so i'm going to put it back to factory because this is how we test we test at factory that way we have no uh impact whatsoever on the performance but look at that look at the temperature drop under load <laughs> That shows you the efficiency of this cooler versus the wattage design. Let's now play with the actual game. And while we're in the game, we'll start turning on some of the tech, like ray tracing and stuff. So we actually did the game the full 100 megahertz I gave it. We went from 2745 to 2850. So you see, we didn't really gain like a little bit more power, but that's it. Uh, it might look kind of gross because this is a 4K native panel that we were running 1080p on. Remember, these are ultra settings with no sort of DLSS or anything on. 60C, oh, look at where you're, <laughs> don't text and benchmark. I mean, don't drive and benchmark people. Okay, we dropped down to 51 right there, 53, 52. It's raining in Night City right now. There's a lot of lighting stuff going on, even though again, RTX is not enabled. We did go underneath the, 50, the 60 FPS magic number. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is hard on a keyboard, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they usually drive with a controller. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and now start turning on some stuff. So if I go to graphics, it's probably gonna tell me I have to restart the game, but we'll just start with DLSS quality. So quality is gonna be the um, lowest amount of upscaling. What that means is that that's the highest res closest to the native res. And it's gonna still give us some performance improvement though. And this is the way I normally use DLSS is quality because of the fact that uh, DLSS can start to look a bit smudged the lower that base resolution gets. Now look at our FPS. 90s? Man, it's just like LA, come on. Woo! <laughs> okay, all right, frame gen time. I cannot tell where the interpolation is happening though. Like you can't tell. Oh crap. <laughs> now when we turn on ray tracing, it's, we're gonna lose a lot of that, those gains. But the idea is that you would turn on these features and you'd be back to having solid FPS, but also all the reflection features. Ray tracing on, go for all of it. Ray trace lighting, go for medium. Okay, we lost about 30 FPS. But now you can see we're, we are actually ray tracing now. You can tell by when you move the cursor and you see the, the depth in the reflection changing. But we're still at 100 FPS on a 60 series card. Dude, look at this, we're maintaining over almost 100 FPS. What happens now if I go DLSS off? Okay, with DLSS off, things aren't really any sharper, honestly. It's the, it's the monitor resolution, but we drop down to 60s. Frame gen is on with DLSS off, that is weird. I would have never in a million years 
I'm, I'm, I'm sitting really close to a 4K panel rendering 1080p, but I never in a million years would have expected a 60 series card to be able to render nearly 100 FPS in Cyberpunk with ray tracing on. Look, I know it sounds super shilly, but if it wasn't for frame gen, my bad. My bad, I was just having a party. My bad. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for frame gen and DLSS 3, this would be hard. And, I, and I'm well aware that you guys right now are like, ah, oh, Nvidia paid him. No, they didn't. I wish I got Nvidia money that way when I'm in, when I am accused of being an Nvidia shill, I actually got something for it, but I don't. All right, well, there's our teaser look at the 4060. You know, ultimately it, it price, price is everything. And $300 for a 60 series card, although that has been the norm since the 20 series. Look, through the early teasers right now, this is the first time I got to see it running. We literally brought you guys along for the, the first fire up and the first testing. I can tell you right now, if you go back and watch my 2060 review, 2060 Ti review, heck even 3060 review, I was like, ray tracing on a 60 series card is atrocious. And for 2060, that was especially true. Because that was when not that many titles actually took advantage of DLSS. Remember, we were using Battlefield 1, or no, Battlefield 5. We were using Battlefield 5 as a test for that, and it was gross. The first gen RT cores and the DLSS was so new, it just, the, the feature, it just was not, it was not pretty, it was not fun. The FPS hit was so high. I was telling people, don't buy a 2060. There's no point if you're interested in these ray tracing techs, you needed to go high tier card. 30 series changed that, where going down to like a, 20, a 3070 was able to like give you realistic performance. And then the 60 series cards were still okay, but the second gen RT cores were getting better, but in DLSS had grown. DLSS 2 made huge gains, but it wasn't there yet as far as I'm concerned. 40 series, 60 series card with DLSS 3, frame gen on, and running ray tracing now to get you this kind of FPS in a title as demanding as Cyberpunk shows now the extra feature sets are something that's worth considering. So considering the fact that you get those features and that performance uplift for the same price as what you were getting with like Turing back at 2060, I know probably people are probably gonna hate me for saying that, but I don't think that's a bad thing if you consider how much things have increased in cost since 2018. 2018 is when all that came out. So yes, $300 is a lot for a graphics card. I, I stand by wishing that NVIDIA was able to make this work at 20, 279, because that makes it an ultra compelling argument. But realistically, we need to compare this to the AMD offerings around the same price point. And it really depends on whether or not they really are gonna cost 299, because I just showed you there are 3060s that cost more. So how are you gonna sell a 4060 for that price if you're the vendor? Anyway, there's our early, our early look. Sound off down below. I would 100% expect you guys to probably still not be willing to invest in, in $300 at a 60 series card right now. Um, although the 60 series card is where Steam's survey has shown it's like over 70% of people have spent their money. So this is where the buyer exists in the tier, but is it where it exists for you at that price point? Sound off down below guys, and we'll see you in the official review later this week.